recorded. Our presentation today is by Mark, Mike Landrum. Thank you, Rose. Better get my unmuted here. As I, as I said earlier, I'm really interested in the very beginnings of art and religion. And I think the two of them came at the same time during Paleolithic times. Early human culture was a type of subsistence lifestyle that's known as hunter-gatherer. Uh, the entire population of human beings, human sa homo sapiens sapien, uh, lived by nomadic hunting, fishing, and foraging. Uh, the, the largest bands of people were about a hundred strong or extended families. The cave paintings of the early Stone Age humans were entirely unknown to the world until 1868, when a hunter in Spain stumbled on a hidden cave in a forest. Uh, he alerted the landowner uh, that happened to own that land about the cave and told him it was interesting. And the, the owner, after some period of time, called a friend of his up who taught history in a college and suggested that the history teacher might, the professor might find something interesting in this cave. Well, the history professor brought his eight-year-old daughter to, to explore this cave not knowing what what he would find and the professor was on his hands and knees in the uh, examining the bones on the floor of the cave when he heard his daughter say look papa oxen and what the daughter was looking at was the ceiling now, i'm going to go into sharing the screen now let's get the uh, powerpoint on here there we go Bear with me a minute. Technology, I love it, don't you? So here is a, a photograph of one of the drawings and one of the pieces of art that they uncovered in Altamira Cave in Spain. This was the first time that anybody had seen any kind of Neolithic art, and it had a hard time getting credibility. People didn't believe it. They thought this is a forgery. Some modern artist has snuck into this cave and painted these things. They're actually not oxen, but an extinct breed of bison. And uh, this painting has been dated at about 36,000 BC. So at first, uh, the, the cave extended for a thousand yards and the walls and low ceiling everywhere was covered with art. Here's another example from that cave. <clears throat> uh, you can see how carefully the art was done. Uh, in fact, it looks as if this wall was scraped smooth to make a better base for the paintings. Well, people began to search for caves then and they found them. Uh, over the next, well, since 1868, all of these places across the world have discovered Neolithic sites, cave art, where stone, where rock art exists. Now, some of the art is not in a cave. There's a, there's a site in Australia where it's simply an overhang, but it's all decorated and it all dates back between 40,000 and 12,000 years ago. <clears throat> there are more than 350 caves in present day Spain and France. And uh, we'll call this a, a, a Paleolithic, which, is, which means early stone age. Uh, some of these caves, or at least the art in them, has been scientifically dated to over 50,000 years, 
before the common era. And it's now believed that the Neanderthal people also created some of those old paintings. And they disappeared from the fossil record about 35,000 years ago. But rock art has been found on every continent on the planet except Australia. Except, I'm sorry, except Antarctica. Now, let me get another slide. Uh, this urge to paint has been powerful among talented people, and this drove artists to refine their techniques and materials. The, the colors they used and found in nature were black, white, red, yellow, which was uh, red and yellow ochre. Uh, sometimes they would have to use scaffolding. They'd have to build themselves some sort of a little ladder or something. Uh, these these beasts on this picture were aurochs, which is an ancient and extinct breed of cattle. The dominant subjects depicted are all animals. And the animals fall into two categories, animals for food or dangerous animals, predators. Here's another interesting thing. Handprints occur in many, many Neolithic sites. Uh, it, it's quite moving, I think, and a very modern idea. These stencils are the sort of the Ice Age equivalent of Kilroy was here. You can imagine that, and I think there's a religious application to this. The, the idea that a human being making his presence known and permanently attaching himself to that cave wall is, uh, there's a reassurance about that. So how did they make these? Well, the artist would have to have some powder, some, uh, or maybe he'd chew the colors, which were either charcoal or stone of some sort, or maybe mud. They would put their hand in mud and stamp it on the, on the wall. But to, to make this negative print, he would, he or she would have to have hollow tubes perhaps filled with dust that they then blow on, on the back of their hand and they leave a stencil image, sort of a spray paint Krylon or Rust-Oleum situation 40,000 years in advance. Here's another example. This one's from Sulawesi Island in the in Sulawesi Island in Indonesia. It seems like a crowd of people are here, but in fact, the handprints are all from the artist. Uh, and experts have identified many of these handprints as female. Did you know that the female handprint? You can tell male and female one way is to. Look at the ring finger and the index finger. On a, on a man, they tend to be the same length. On women, the ring finger seems to extend further. If you'd be interested in checking that out sometimes. Let's move on. Oh, oh here's an interesting uh, set of hands. It's called a bouquet. And it, it kind of has a modern art feel about it. <clears throat> This is on a ceiling of a cave, and you can see here that the hands are perhaps a little more delicate, and there is some, some different colors being used. The, uh, well, well, wrong page. the subjects are always animals, meaning uh, food or danger. And here we see humans depicted in a minimal stick figure sort of fashion. Uh, it's contrast to the deer, which are shown in a full silhouette. And there's an image here of tiny deer, which give a feeling of uh, depth or of uh, seeing perhaps a, a full meadow with a whole herd of deer as it recedes from view. This is one of the few hunting scenes. Uh, there are other many hunting scenes, but uh, this one shows bows and arrows. So we get an idea of the, the 
the feeling of what what life was like for these Paleolithic people. Now, here's a view of the inside of Chauvet Cave, which is one of the most spectacular caves in France. This cave was discovered in uh, 1994. Uh, You'll see this uh, stone in the foreground that uh, they dubbed the altar stone, and that's a bear's skull on top of the altar stone. Uh, the cave was filmed by Werner Herzog, the German filmmaker, who uh, made a wonderful film, called it The Cave of Forgotten Dreams. And you can, uh, you can rent that film at Prime if you want. Or I've got a copy, and I'd like to figure out a way to come and show it to uh, the congregation at some point. It's a wonderful film. Uh, well, this cave was discovered on purpose. Uh, people knew by 1994 that there are caves all over the Pyrenees and in France. In fact, they wound up finding over 350 Neolithic caves that had decorations in them. And uh, in 1994, a group of archaeologists were uh, surveying a cliff face, uh, which you'll see on the film is beautiful high cliffs on a river. And they found one place where there was a crack in the face cliff, cliff face and air streaming out. So they figured, ah, there's uh, something in there. They opened the crack up further when able to crawl inside. And uh, this, this led to uncovering a gorgeous example of Neolithic art. This cave goes on for over a th almost a thousand meters underground. This is how it looks underground, of course. And, and they, they found uh, Neolithic art all the way back in all of the underground extent of this uh, cavern. And there were over 200 Bear, uh, bear, can uh, skulls and bones from two hundred individual bears. Now the bears. Let's talk about the bears because they don't really explain. Here's one of the very few drawings of a bear on, and it, which I think is a beautiful sketch. I mean, you can see the bear. The bear was actually a version of a grizzly bear. <clears throat> They're extinct now, but uh, at the time they, they stood nine feet tall and were ferocious animals. And I've been wondering how they managed to uh, work out because the, uh, I mean, after all, 40,000 years, uh, the and the humans were not living in these caves, but they would attend, they would come in just to do the drawings. Uh, the bear became, I think, an object of worship. So that skull on the altar meant that uh, this animal was, was deemed a, a worship-worthy creature. It was a period of animism. So... I don't figure, I can't figure out how the bears and the people managed to coexist in this cave. There must have been some ancient sublet agreement or something. Okay, let's see here. Horses. Horses, uh, of course, were for food. And in fact, you can still, you can still buy horse meat in Paris. A meal of horse meat, I'm told. Let me show you one of my favorites, though. Yes, there were rhinoceroses in Europe. And what a wonderful tusk this artist drew. He had great passion for this painting, uh, this sketch. There's an impressive confidence and a sense of speed in the drawing here, almost a cartoon with that exaggerated horn and the front feet would seem to gallop and dance. The freedom and humor shown here are signs of a true master of the craft. He's as good as Picasso, I think. I love that rhinoceros. 
Now, there were also sketches of, I think, religious import. Here seemed to be a, a sketch of two women, possibly dancing. And one of them's wearing a, a headdress with horns, uh, antlers on it. And it's a, a question to me of why were the animals so completely depicted and human beings in this sort of sketchy father way. Still, you can understand what spooky fig figures these were. Probably the shaman or shao women, whatever the, whatever the proper term would be leaders of the worship. Here's another, I think, religious artifact. This is the famous Lewinminch figurine, Lion Man. It was discovered in a German cave in 1939 and carbon dated at 35,000 to 40,000 years. Carved from ivory, a mammoth tusk. This figure of a man wearing a lion head reminds me of the African shaman who would often dance with a with a lion's head or pelt. There are other figures like this. Uh, wait a minute, I don't have him up here. How did that? Did you see this before? Yeah. There were other animal headed carvings like this, but this figurine is about 12 feet, 12 inches high, a, a doll that would have been easily portable and uh, taken from camp to camp by these nomadic hunter gatherer people. Another object. This is the famous Venus of Willendorf defined by experts as a fertility goddess, or maybe just ancient porn. There were dozens of these sorts of figures created and much handled from the smooth smoothness of the more worn stone. And this famous creature uh, is one of the earliest depictions of a human being. And this is well over 40,000 years old. Here's a very famous panel from that Chauvet cave, the panel of lions. Uh, notice the pair touching noses in the center. And is that a rhino in the bottom or, and a bison? You can see how the artist hones his or her craft. And there is so much to see here. You can imagine many different artists at work over vast stretches of time because these cave art, uh, the cave art was up for all of those thousands of years. So different artists would come and try their hand at the same thing and practice the shading. The shading is quite modern and quite impressive. Uh, these bull, bulls, I think, were drawn for practice. And you can see the line of erasure on them all along their, their backside. It seems as though there was a different line there and, so, and they've come and erased it. Now, whether it was the same artist that drew it or a later one is a question. We have more questions than answers here for sure. And finally, I wanna show you another masterpiece. This is also in the Chauvet cave. This panel of four horses is now very famous. And there are also aurochs in this, this painting and a pair of rhinoceroses that seem to be battling. So anyway, when the long term of our existence as a race has ended, 
and future beings reach our planet and become curious to learn about who we were and seeing our many works, it could well be that the first art we ever created would be judged our best. And I'd like to throw the floor open to any questions. Now, let me, uh, let me stop the screen share so we can get back to the, to the group of you. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for understanding the uh, perhaps different than what you expected from the title of the of the piece that was published. Are there any questions? Like I say, I have more questions than answers, but uh, I'll be happy to offer what I can.